super bumpy. Do you hear my voice? <laughs> Program gaming fitness. Jesse Warden. What's up, y'all? Jesse Warden here. Her Majesty got me a one wheel XR for my 40th birthday. You can see it's really well put together. It's made in Santa Cruz, California. The grip tape, very similar to skateboards, really high quality. The wheel is actually a go-kart wheel. It's about 20 PSI, so very soft, very smooth ride when you're on pavement or asphalt. Loses traction on sand and mud, but for the most part, I've been very impressed with the wheel. It will kick up rocks and whatnot, so some people put some wheels on, on it to protect it. It's around 27 and a half pounds. The way you mount it is you put your foot on the back, which always goes down. So that right side there always goes down. You put your right foot there. Once you put your left foot flat on the front, it'll go down. So if you have your toe sticking up or your heel sticking up, it won't actually engage. But if you have your both feet down, then it'll go. And it has a gyroscope. So that's not me bouncing there. That's actually the gyroscope built in. It, it auto bounces for you. And if you lean right, it'll go backwards. But you always have to jump off. The app allows you to set different modes for it and anything basically above cruise is super dangerous. So I have mission on there. It's, uh, it says it'll go around 19 miles an hour max, but I have a feeling it goes around 25 if you're nuts. It's got a handle on the front that works really, really well. From a carrying perspective, I'm just tall enough. I'm 5'8", where it's about an inch, inch and a half off the ground so you can carry it. Oh man. Did it run out of power? I think it ran out of power. Crap, I gotta walk halfway across the neighborhood. But it's got this nice little handle, so you can, you know, carry it. If you're short like me, it just barely is against the ground, so I don't have to worry about it scratching. But man, super heavy. One thing I want to point out too is these lights. I've turned them off. You can turn them off in the app by pressing this button. But I can turn them on, and this one's red because currently it's the back, and the front is the white. And it's red right currently because it stops, but at night, it's actually really bright and wide. Very, very nice. It shows about six to 10 feet, depending upon the terrain and the angle. I took it to 7-Eleven last night, last night on the sidewalk, and it was very difficult to see the potholes. Once the gyroscope engages, this thing is a seriously smooth ride when you're on normal streets or running around. And just like a hoverboard, I don't know if you've ever tried a vertical hoverboard where you actually lean forward, with the two wheels on the side. This one, you ride like a skateboard, but it has a very similar feel in that if you don't focus on your feet, you just look straight up and you, you think about leaning forward to go forward and you think about leaning right to go, to turn on the brake or you know, once you're stopped, go backwards. It has that similar feel. So as long as you don't focus on your feet, that's how you drive it. And it's a very, very smooth ride, fun to ride around the neighborhood if you turn it slow. And if you wanna go to like, nearby streets or whatever. I've taken them to the grocery store or the local corner store to get milk or snacks or whatever with the kids. And if someone's on a bike, they can totally keep up with you. Something like a scooter, you can go. But conversely, I've actually taken the dog for a walk on this as well, just going one mile per hour, but it's kind of good for him to get some speed. He's a, needs some exercise. Normally when you skateboard, you kind of have a center, center of gravity. You, just, you know, bend your knees a little bit. You can lean back, turn left or lean forward to turn right. And if you're goofy foot, it's the exact opposite. This, you also lean forward to go faster or keep your speed in the turn and back when you're going back in the turns. So it's, it's like another thing to remember, which is kind of weird. Now, unlike an electric skateboard, this thing can handle some pretty rough terrain. And I don't just mean street. I mean, it can literally go off road. So you can see a few shots here where I go from the street or sidewalk to grass and then conversely go back from grass or ground gravel to the street. I've also taken it in the backwoods trails, so hiking trails. It can do most downhills pretty well as long as you don't have massive, massive roots going with you. And you only lose traction on really, really thin mud. If you're going down a hill, it actually has regenerative braking. So if you haven't just charged it, it can actually help recharge the battery as well. The one thing to note is going up hills, they actually have a setting for it. You're not supposed to go around 15 degree hills or whatever. So it's a little difficult going up super steep hills. Now, someone who rollerbladed a lot when he was a kid and did skateboarding as well, and even BMX racing once or twice, I cannot overstate how important it is to wear protection when you're riding something as dangerous as this. The first is you've got to have a helmet, protect your head. And the second is you need some wrist guards, especially if you're a programmer like me. 
It's better to get either motorcycle gloves or any kind of hand protection because the wrist guards will protect your hands, but as you can see from one of my falls, your, your fingers are left to the elements. And when you're going 20 miles per hour, your hands basically turn into butter on that asphalt. It, it, if you're falling on the ground, you're gonna get gravel and abrasions and they really hurt. The knee pads and elbow pads are also must. The elbow is mainly because that's the, the thing that takes the brunt of the fall once your hip touches the ground or your feet touch the ground and it just, you know, ex speeds up when you hit the ground. So the elbow pads are nice. And finally, knee pads are good mainly because they, if you fall, you can use them to break a lot of the speed. And some of the knee pads have massive amounts of padding. So even if you're, you know, have weak knees or whatever else, they, they help a lot. So something is, even if you're going low speeds, it still hurts a lot going 11 miles an hour and then suddenly you're flying through the air and hit the asphalt. What it'll do sometimes is if you go too fast, the push up will come up. And what this will do is it'll hit against the ground and you'll literally stop and the board will stop and you'll go flying forward like I just did. And you just got to roll with it. So that's why elbow pads are actually a lot more important for this thing. Because if not, that happens. Now the reason they tell you to start on grass with these things, although it's a little more difficult if the grass is soft just because you don't have your balance yet, is that because when you fall, you're going to fall a lot when you first start. A lot of times you focus way too much on the board. You look at the board or you look at your balance or you look at yourself in relation to that rather than just looking forwards, looking where you want to go, kind of feeling where you want to go and paying too much attention to the board. So if you fall on the grass, it doesn't hurt a lot. And I fell a lot. But like a skateboard, it's really rugged, put together very, very well. And the battery charge lasts a long, long time, even when it was shipped with it. So you can fall a lot, try again, and it's, it's okay. It's going to happen a lot. And as long as you set the digital shaping, AKA how fast you want to go and the style of writing on the phone app and keep it pretty low, you won't have to worry about taking a massive, massive dive unless you're intentionally trying to hurt yourself. Now, when you're going super fast, it will push back the gyroscope on your front left foot if you're regular foot or on your right foot if you're goofy foot will push up to slow you down automatically and tell you, hey, I'm going too fast. Or if you're doing regenerative braking, it's saying, hey, I can't recharge the battery now, I'm too charged. You need to listen to that because if you don't and lean forward, it'll disengage, you'll overcompensate, the board will hit the front, stop, and you'll go flying like, it'll basically be a catapult and throw you forward. The board stops and you're going like 50 miles an hour. And you can see here while I was trail riding that I was attacking some puddles. It is not waterproof, it is water resistant. However, you can see that even after blasting some puddles, I was okay. I'm not gonna hose dry it. I'm definitely gonna wait for it to dry and brush it dry, but it can definitely take some water. I went in the uh, light, light, light rain with it and she was super, super durable. Now, some people will get the wheel guard because when that wheel is going super fast, it'll kick up gravel and sometimes hit you or hit you with water. And some of those can really hurt, especially if you're not wearing thick jeans or thick pants or whatever else. And some people even put padding on the bottom of that because the noise is just too annoying. Now from a branding perspective, one thing that I'm seriously impressed with is that it actually comes with business cards or sales cards. And these are because everybody sees your one wheel and says, what the heck is that? Is it electric? Is it gas? How does it go? And so they ask you a lot of questions. So you can give them this card so they can learn more information about the website, which I thought was from a marketing and branding perspective, a seriously impressive, smart move to do. Considering the fact that most things aren't actually manufactured and created in America when it comes from to hardware, I was seriously impressed that you know, this is just an extra thing to say, hey, let's help an American company. That's what kids say when it's cool, right? Okay, sick board. Now, one thing I learned the hard way while trail riding is that once your feet get wet and once you get some mud and dirt and debris on the board itself, the grip tape can only go so far once it's corroded with stuff and debris. So if you're gonna go trail riding, I recommend you carry one of those small brooms, the handheld ones. That way you can use it to brush off the mud from both your shoe and the board itself to keep your grip becomes very, very difficult to even mount it. You actually have to put your, your foot on the top lip and then as the board goes down, quickly move your foot into position on the left side. That way you can engage the gyro on the board because it's, it's so slippery. You just cannot transition your weight that way unless you kind of like throw yourself. So yeah, definitely recommend bringing that with you if you're gonna go trail riding. Even if it's dry, you can hit some mud patch and this becomes you know very, very difficult. And as soon as it gets bumpy, your feet start moving sometimes 
the board will detect when your feet are either moving around or the weight distribution is too much if you're on like let's say a bumpy ground or gravel and so it'll slow down or, or stop for example so you might be able to just do it come on baby <laughs> see the flowers it works Stop one. Stop one dot com. Anybody lose their plow? That shed looks really cold. I do not want to sleep in there. The grass, yo. Nothing. The flowers, oh gosh, yellow and purple. I feel like I'm in Skyrim, but I gotta pick up, make some potions. Yeah, healing potions. You know it'd be great right now, being 40 years old, after my wreck yesterday? A healing potion. Steep hill. Whoops. Oh, that's interesting. It thinks it's going forward and stuck. So it wedged itself in there. I had to turn it off to get it out. So in conclusion, the One Wheel VR is an amazing toy. Again, Her Majesty, when I was 30, said you need to get a hobby to get off the computer. And so I took up bodybuilding and exercising. So now that I'm 40, she's like, that's great, but you only do bodybuilding or working out or powerlifting or whatever it is I do, parkour, about an hour a day. And she's trying to get me to do something even more off the computer, because then I go back to the computer after working out. So this thing is, at least for the past few days, has caused me to go out. I think it'll be really useful in the summer when we travel to the pool with the kids. And if we go on trips, it's definitely fun to take off-road. Unlike an electric skateboard, I like the fact that I can take it, you know, not have to worry about going on grass, or whatever, and dirt, and it's just super durable. So I'm very, very impressed, but I highly, highly recommend, obviously without the pads, those are non-negotiable, that you keep the settings very low. This thing is super dangerous, even with pads, and I would not ever want my kids to touch this until they're at least 18. <laughs> so, but because of that fact, it is super fun. And it was also neat to, when I'm doing the rides on the app to actually see all the people nearby me who had you know logs and rides that they had logged as well which meant that it's not just me there's a lot of other people enjoying it as well so I thought that was kind of cool from a social aspect so definitely recommend it if you're curious to get one electric skateboards are great if you're in an urban environment if you're more of a suburban like me we live both with a lot of wonderful paved areas and strip mall air type areas as well as off-road definitely definitely a fun fun toy and I'm glad I got it for my birthday Three. Except I'm on a one wheel instead of roach.